As we speak, and we're going to go over uh, Bivol Ramirez, also the news about the WBC uh, banning Russian and Belarusian fighters, mate, um, and a couple of other other fights that have happened in the last few weeks, and then looking forward to the next fights as well. Plenty of things to discuss, man, as always. Plenty of things to discuss, mate. How are you, mate? I feel like you're closer to the camera. I need to get closer to the camera. <laughs> yeah, getting uh, right up in there, man. Getting yeah. right up in there. Like you um, I'm very well. How are you? Good, mate. I'm really good, apart from somebody's trying to jump through my ceiling. Um, so apologies if you can if you can hear that. But um, I can't do anything about it, and it's dark outside, so I don't know why they're still here, to be honest. They're dedicated, man. They're dedicated, dedicated. to their craft. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, man, WBC banning Russia and Belarus. Obviously, I can see why they've done it. They've made a political standpoint. But how does that affect fighters like Dmitry Bivol, for example, Arthur Bertabiev, the best, some of the best fighters in the world that are Russian? Not so much Belarusian fighters, because I couldn't really tell you any of those. I don't think there is any. I don't think there is either, yeah. Anyway. But yeah, what were you th- what were you th- thoughts on that, mate? Um, to be honest with you, I never really, I don't really like it when politics and sport intersect. I always think it's a bit of a weird sort of thing, and I, th- I think with obviously as something as serious as war, yeah. um, and and like when the world uniformly goes against a nation. I suppose it has to impact its citizens, you know, like it has to seize their assets. It has to exclude them from competitions. It has to, you know, exclude them from the banking system and like all, all these different sort of wide reaching things happen when a, a nation sort of breaches international law like that. And, and to be honest with you, you know, I, I don't really liked it because you've mentioned a couple of champions there you know in the light heavyweight division who probably don't even really live in russia um who who are are definitely not in the inner circle (laughs) you know what i mean they're not making these decisions they're very much like everybody else kind of sort of watching the news seeing things play out and it it it, it is sort of unfair to to sort of see people um who 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 have as little control as, as we do really on these big world stage these big world decisions um and you see their livelihoods being impacted in a practical sense i'm not really sure how it works because i know a lot of fighters tend to represent other countries so I, i'm i'm not i'm not sure if they, if cuz that there's been a couple of russian fighters fighting recently like bivol's just fought in in um in in the united arab emirates mm-hmm. um I don't. I think I'm going to butcher his name here, but the guy who fought Zelfa Barrett Karakov, Karakov. it's a very Russian name. Yeah, he um, he's, he's Russian as well, and, and he was fighting on the undercard, won a world title. So um, again, I'm not sure in a practical sense how it works. I understand how they do it in the Olympics, but mm-hmm. um, in the professional ranks, it seems it seems more it seems like a more difficult thing to sort of police and regulate. But yeah, I mean, I, like I say, politics and and sports they should never really mix, and, and when they do, it it's never good. Yeah, um, you made some very good points. I think, I think a couple of the fires as well are kind of, I know Maka Murdov and Arta Bertabiev are also Canadian uh, citizens. So I'm presuming that means they're unable to just fight on and continue um, under a Canadian citizenship. Also, there's a point of like they're Russian by birth, like they didn't choose to be Russian at the same time. I could understand if they're going into fights going like with a big sign saying, I love war and I love killing people that aren't Russian. But at the same time, they're not doing that. Do you know what I mean? They're just fighting. They're just, that's their job. And they just happen to be Russian at the same time. So is it really fair that they're going to just ban all Russians, especially you talking about somebody like Dmitry Bivol, who is arguably top, top five pound for pound right now, considered one of the best fighters in the world, um, you know, uh, similar with Arta Bertabiev, is unbeaten. Um, you know, you've got some really good fi- Russian fires, and so they're going to throw away all their legacy, or they're going to have to th- give away their titles. We don't really know. It's kind of very unclear by the WBC. It's just almost like they've made a political statement, 
just to say, hey, this is this, and this is where we're gonna stay on on side with the media. But at the same time, we're not really going to do anything about it. We're just going to kind of say that that's what we're going to do. Yeah, or- and I think I think you made a very good point there as well. It's like nationhood is, is, is very much like parenthood. Like you don't choose who your parents are. You know, you don't, yeah. don't choose which country you're born in. Um, yeah. And, and we, we don't necessarily always agree with our parents. And we definitely don't always agree with the direction our countries are going in, you know. Especially so, the so- government. I'll say yeah, like, especially exactly. the government right now. 100%. I mean, most of the time, most of the time, the government is at odds with its c- civilians. And um, so it's, it is it, it is sad to see because, you know, you see ordinary people um, sort of bearing the brunt of that. And I think it's more so when you're in the public eye, um, you're more likely to be made a scapegoat of. And I, I think that can be the case. Um, most of these guys, as you mentioned, they don't. They're not. They're, they're not boxing out of Moscow. You know, they're boss. They're most. I'm um, Bivol boxes out of California. Yeah. I think that Bet- 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 boxes out of um, uh, Canada. So David, they're, 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 David Avenesian trains in Nottingham in the UK. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So, so it is you, like that. You made a you made a great point there. You really did. Yeah. The other thing as well is that you know, is it going to be to the pace? Uh, you know, a situation where they did like the Olympics, like you mentioned a very good point earlier, like they're going to be, you know, representation, you know, world athletes of Russia or, or however they, whatever yeah. the thing Some they neutral call body. Yeah. Whatever they called themselves in the Olympics with the white flag and the little gold leaf thing on it. I don't know what that was, but whatever it was. I don't, um, I don't think Putin, Putin endorsed that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so however they do it they might it might be something that they have to do um yeah. but yes talking of russians mate we 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 didn't have time to catch up on an enormous fight which was uh um ramirez versus bivol i thought was a fantastic fight um i wanted to get your thoughts yeah well to be honest with you i expected that fight to be a lot more evenly contested um which on paper it, it should have been so yeah. for example you know Ramirez was unbeaten uh, he was a bigger guy um, and you know he, he never really struggled with any of his opponents and we had kind of expected him to kind of come in there and at least at least his game plan I think would have been to impose his will on Bivol and it never really happened it was an absolute masterclass by Bivol you know yeah. um, I struggled to give Ramirez more than a couple of rounds mm-hmm. um, and the rounds that I did give him were more like sort of because I've given like four rounds to Bivol, I'm going to give you a round now, even though, you know, it's a very competitive round. So, I mean, it was an absolute masterclass. And I think the one thing that Bivol displayed in the Canelo fight that he carried through to this fight is when he starts throwing those punches, man, like when he's got somebody trapped on the ropes or he's, he's decided to, he's made a decision in his mind to go on the offensive. He throws like 14 punch combinations. It's, it's, it's madness for a guy that size. He, like, I might be exaggerating there, but he really does. He throws like long combinations of like eight to ten punches, and, and they're landing shots, you know. And um, yeah. he, he really, he really barrages and he, he picks his moments so well. Um, he, he is a real sort of um, he is a real master of his craft, and it, it is a true honor to watch somebody like that who is that proficient. Um, and and he absolutely dominated Ramirez. Yeah, I was I was watching an interview with Oscar de la Hoya before the fight, and it was quite interesting because he was he was very pro Ramirez, and he was saying, you know, nobody's ever he's never ever faced somebody as big as Gilberto uh, Ramirez because you know he's so big, um, he's much bigger than Bivol, and Bivol's already fights guys that are smaller, and he's going to use his size and everything, and it was interesting because. Bivol completely um, cut his size down. You know, he, he got in close and he stepped out of range. Ramirez looks clumsy. He looked clumsy with his feet. Um, yeah. I noticed as well a very smart thing that Bivol was doing. Um, it was kind of sneakily stepping on Bivol's, uh, Ramirez's feet a little bit and stepping in and and then stepping Pressuring him, yeah. Pressuring him with that lead very foot. Cute. Yeah. Very cute. Very cute. But work with these that's hands. high level that's high that's high level high that, that, that that's, level. Uh, that's amateur level that, that that's like could that, that's high yeah that's, that's pedigree exactly yeah. because you could see ramirez's feet weren't as quick and uh bivol was able to come in and come out and dip in and out so he's completely cancelled out his kind of reach advantage and 
his size advantage and uh you know it was a great fight by Bibble. It just it just solidified to me that he is just such a good fighter. Um yeah, yeah. and I really feel like now him and Bet- Better Biev, if they fight, it's gonna be I don't I don't even think it's like you know, you could argue everyone would say Better Biev would win, and I don't even know if you would. Um, About Bival and Ramirez. Um <laughs> He really did win the fight at every range. You know, he won it. He won it up close, and he won it sort of, you know, long range as well. He really cancelled out the bigger guys' advantages and disadvantage. You know, and, and, and turned them into his disadvantages. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a punch perfect performance, really. Um, in terms of better Biev, I think you know, I think Canelo's made a statement recently to say that he's just recovered from a wrist injury and he wants to go back and seek revenge. I, I I think of it, I don't that there, there's not really an appetite for that fight in my opinion. No, you know, right. I would like to see Bivol now sort of sidestep the Canelo thing, even though there's money in it. Chase legacy. I would like to see him fight Bet Better Biev. And I actually favor him in that fight. I think you know yeah. Better Biev clearly has the a power advantage over him, but I think um I think Bivol's quite clearly um, the better boxer quite clearly as well yeah um, and, and 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 you know it powers all well and good but if you can't land that shot or or, or if you know you, you can't you know i know i know 12 rounds is a long time but you no, know i mean we saw it with uh wilder and fury you know if you're a technically better boxer even if you've got that right hand you've got that power and you can't like if you can't land it you can't land it, uh, That's it. yeah I, I think I favor Bivol at this point in time, and I hope he does go for legacy because when he talks and does interviews, he does reaffirm that he just wants belts. Yeah. And even though there's a lot of money in Canelo, I didn't like to see it because there was such a huge size difference that it didn't seem like it was fair. It didn't yeah. seem like it was a a fight that was was really you know something I want to see again. And... I mean, I don't think anybody will blame Bivol if he takes the fight again because Canelo's pushing for it and it's an easy payday. But yeah. it's like, it's like as fans of the sport, we're always so let down when we see these big fights slip away or they get delayed. Um, it would be nice to see Bivol just roll into a unification bout now. Big, yeah. big, huge fight in the light heavyweight division. Um, and, and, and it would really set that division on fire as well. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on then. Let's also talk about the um, Rack- uh, was it Rakamov's and Barat? I believe it's Rakamov. Um, he's trained by Freddie Roach um, and he's just became a world champion against Zelfa Barrett. Now, I'm a huge, huge fan of Zelfa Barrett. From my um, part of the way as well, from Manchester. Exactly. And he's a really, really tough guy. Really tough guy. Um, and, 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 and do you know what it is? The way the fight sort of unfolded, um, he dropped... Uh, Rakamov in the in the third round, um, I believe, and um, I, I really th- it, his combinations. He seemed almost too much to handle for Rakamov. Mm-hmm. Um, who Rakamov's a really devastating puncher as well, and it, it almost seemed as if he couldn't land the shots that he wanted, and he was just a punch. He was just that little bit slower than Barrett, um, and. I thought it was going to be far too much for him, Barrett. You know, the way he started fast and he kept that pressure on him. Yeah. But over the, as as the fight sort of ebbed into the into the middle rounds, we saw Rakamov start to get to Barrett a little bit more with those sort of long, ponderous sort of shots. Um, and, he, and he was getting to him and he was slowing him down. And then something really bizarre happened. I, I, I'm not sure if he, if, if Zelfa Barrett sort of twisted his knee or he, you know, received an injury of some sort, but his, his right leg just completely went out from underneath him, and he just seemed really unsteady. And and then it was it was it was it was you know it was over at that point. You know, Rakamov kind of uh, had him exactly where he wanted him, um, trapped him, and, and and just stopped him. And it was it was quite a brutal ending, really. Um, and it was a shame to see as well because Zelfa Barrett. You know, he started that fight so brightly, um, and uh, it, it, it was it was it was a tough one to take. However, um, the the one good thing that might come out of it is, you know, Joe Cordina, the Welsh wizard, was ringside, and I think he's looking for a fight with Rakimov next. So I think we might see Rakimov in the UK, you know, with Freddie Roach campaigning to, for a unification fight at some point. So you know, a really 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 interesting fight that one was. I love Freddie Roach. He's such a great coach and you know uh, it's such a shame about his um 
disability that he's kind of picked up in his later years because he's such a character and he knows so much. He's got so much knowledge about boxing that even with his uh, disability, he's able to still, you know, educate and train fighters to such a degree. Um, I don't know if you saw as well recently, he got really, uh, he got really upset with Eddie Hearn and um was like threatening to knock him out and stuff recently i think a lot of people have been getting upset with Eddie Hearn recently. <laughs> yeah and like the yeah but it? freddie's a legend though the disability or not i mean the yeah. man is training champions you know yeah. even now he's, pop, he's popping up in the uae with a new russian champion you know yeah so yeah